Since the October 7th Hamas attack, Western media have happily peddled misinformation about what actually happened that day. And they've shown that they love nothing more than a lurid headline, even when it's completely false. So in November, The Sun printed the lie that Hamas had baked babies alive in ovens. And just days after the attack, several papers ran the story that Hamas had beheaded 40 babies in one of the attacked kibbutzim. Again, that was completely false. One baby died on October the 7th, and they weren't beheaded. So those stories cannot possibly be true. But the Western press hasn't learned its lessons, because a new sensational claim about October the 7th and its aftermath has emerged. Survivors of October the 7th spoke in Israel's Knesset, calling for better mental health support and treatment for those traumatized by what they saw that day. One of them said this, quote, I don't know if everyone knows, but there are close to 50 suicides among people from the Nova Party. This number was true two months ago. It could be much higher now, unquote. Now, 50 people taking their own lives who attended that festival, that would be an absolutely shocking figure, right? And it's a, it's a figure that grabbed attention. The problem is, it's not true. So later that day, the Times of Israel published this article. So it says, Health Ministry firmly denies claim that 50 supernova survivors took their own lives. So you can see there, even the Israeli Health Ministry says the story wasn't true. But it was good enough for many in the Western press. So the Daily Mail published this headline, Nearly 50 traumatized Israeli revelers have killed themselves since Nova Festival was attacked by Hamas on October the 7th, with others sectioned due to psychiatric issues, Survivor tells Parliament. Rupert Murdoch's New York Post published the story to its large audience as well. As you can see there, nearly 50 attendees of Israel's Nova Festival died by suicide since October the 7th Hamas terrorist attack, Survivor says. They have added Survivor says, but what you've got there is just this big headline that suggests that 50 attendees of the Israel's Nova Festival did die by suicide, which even the Israeli health ministry denies. Despite this, the fake news also hit morning television in the United Kingdom. On a completely different note, but something we shouldn't forget, going back to October the 7th and the original attack on on Israel, I I saw a story yesterday, and I I can't completely sort of bottom it out, but but they've had 50 suicides in Israel of youngish people who were so traumatized by that. So not necessarily taken hostage, mm-hmm. but you know, they came close to death, they lost their friends, etc. So there's an awful lot going on still as a result of October the 7th, which we shouldn't forget. So Jeremy Vine there did add the qualification, you know, I haven't bottomed this out, I haven't checked this. But I mean, whatever the context, when you're talking about suicide, you should be very careful when you're reporting stuff. Even if there had been a, an event involving mass suicides, actually Samaritans and, and the like tell you not to sort of report suicides with with motives because that can you know encourage copycat suicides for example so the reporting about this always has to be done very sensitively and here you've got a situation where you know a very small amount of research tells you this is false and we have had so many stories like this you know if if you're a reporter who hasn't covered um the Israel Palestine conflict before or maybe you don't cover sort of war zones very much then I mean, I think it is completely unforgivable to have to have published any of those stories about beheaded babies or babies in ovens. I do think that's unforgivable. But you can understand how it happened in the fog of war in that immediate seven, uh, immediate seven days. Now, that doesn't make it forgivable, but you can say, well, it, it, it was in those uh, that immediate aftermath. Six months later, to still be sort of accepting any lurid claim which is made about October the 7th and just sort of repeating it without checking it. Like, if, if you're hearing a lurid cr- claim from, from Israel... So many of them have turned out to be completely false that you really shouldn't repeat it without checking it. And it didn't take much checking to work out that this wasn't true. Right? So why are these falsities being pushed out? I think it's probably to distract from what's happening on the ground in Gaza, which everyone can see and world opinion is turning against. So I would advise our mainstream journalists not to fall for this. And you might say they're not falling for this, they're doing it intentionally. Well, if they're doing it intentionally, it's even worse, right? So whatever you're doing, buckle up, you know? This should be condemned from all quarters.